Hey everybody, I thought I'd just do a few more examples of some bed mass questions here with rational numbers. Uh, I said in class, I think of this as almost kind of the, the graduate level of this unit we've been doing because you have to do so many of the skills you've learned over the last few years in single questions. And some of them can be pretty complicated. So here's a video where you can kind of watch what's going on, pause it wherever you like, jot the questions down and try to follow along if you want. I'll try to go step by step and be as reasonable as I can as I go through them. Uh, hopefully at some point in grade 8, once you had learned all of your integer skills, you did some bed math with just integers. Um, after all, integers are rational numbers too, so I thought we'd start there. And let's start with, uh, well, first of all, bed math, remember, means brackets, then exponents, then divide, multiply, then add, subtract, so it's really four steps. So looking at this, I see I do have some brackets first. Now, this bracket here, I mentioned this in class, I call that a cosmetic bracket. There's nothing to do in there. It's just there so that I can tell the difference between that being a subtract symbol and that being the negative that belongs to my 8. But around it, there is this bracket here, which tells me that I have to do that operation first, along with this operation. So I'm going to do those two operations first. I do not scrimp on my work. I actually make sure that I do show exactly what I'm doing and rewrite the entire question, all I've done is simplify the things in the bracket. I think I've said this joke in class a few times. Saying I want to be good at math and not do a bunch of writing is a little like saying I want to be a good hockey player, but I don't want to do all that skating around. You just have to organize yourself on the page, and by forgetting to write the three down on each step, you're just asking to make a mistake. So for, from here, I've dealt with the brackets. Again, the brackets that I've left behind here don't really mean anything other than that's a multiply between there. And I'm not at the multiply step yet. I'm at the exponents step. So my exponents, let me get rid of those little arrows. My exponent step is to actually deal with this two here. That's my exponent. And I have to remember that the exponent counts before my invisible multiply. So I am not squaring this 5. I'm only squaring negative 3, and a negative times itself is a positive. So my next step would look like this. Now I'm ready to do divide and multiply. I don't have any divides left in this question. So it's just going to be the multiplies. And then I'm going to add together. 3 plus 45 is 48, and 48 at negative 6 is 42. So there's the first question over and done. If you want, we're going to later on test this stuff with our calculators, and we're going to learn how to use your calculators. But if you want a sneak preview on that, and you want to just check and see if your answer is right, feel free to break out your calculator and see if you can get this answer just by punching it in. 3 plus 5 times open a bracket, um, 12 with a negative on it, divided by 4, close the bracket, squared, plus 6 times, open a bracket, 9 with a negative on it, minus 8 with a negative on it, close the bracket, and hit equals, well, looky there, 42. Answer to the life, the universe, and everything. That's a coincidence, actually, when I made that up. All right, let's move on to some decimals now. Remember, rational numbers can be decimals too. And I picked a couple that aren't too ugly, but it does say you should be able to do this without a calculator. If you want to check your answers after with a calculator, go ahead. But this is about the level we'll test you at. Things with only maybe one or two decimal places at the most. And if we're asking you questions without a calculator, you should probably recognize that there's going to be some sort of times table factor or a multiply or a divide that isn't all that hard. I look at this and I think of this as 51 divided by 17. Remember that if I move this decimal over once and this decimal over once, it's like I multiplied both of those numbers by 10, which in a divide situation doesn't change the two numbers. So, or sorry, the answer to those two numbers. So from there, I realize that 17 actually does go into 51 three times. So this is really 4.5 plus 3, which is 7.5. 
The most common mistake here, and I maybe should have pointed that on the last one, is that a lot of kids will try to do this ad before they do anything else. I mean, it's in the front of the question. It kind of looks like it's inviting, like just add those together and get it over with. Same thing here. It looks like you should maybe do this divide first, but that would be a violation of bed maps. You do not do add until you've done everything else, basically. So don't do that add first. Same thing here. It looks like maybe I should do that subtract first, but no. Nope. According to bed maps, the multiply happens first. And 3.1 times 0.5, again, I might even do a scrap calculation as what, what is 31 times 5. 5 31s is 155, but there are two decimals in the question, so there needs to be two decimals in the answer. So my actual number here is negative 1.55. Makes sense. Think of 0.5 as a half. What is a half of 3? About 1.5. So from there, get that out of my way. I think of this as add the opposite. And then again, if I want to do a scrap calculation, remember that if you're adding those two values, you have to line up their place values in order to add them properly. And since I added two negatives, I know that the answer is a negative. And again, if you wanted to take out your calculator and check those two answers, you would get exactly what we just got here. That takes us to fractions, and I picked a couple of real nasty looking ones. Uh, you could pause the video here and jot them down if you want to try them yourself before you see me do the answer. But let's get started on the first one. All right, check that out. Well, according to bed mass, I have to do what's in this bracket first, so I'm going to get started on that. I am looking ahead, though, and I look ahead and notice that I'm going to end up dividing this thing. So maybe while I'm at it, I might as well change that to an improper fraction. 4 times 3 plus 2 is 14 thirds. But I haven't really done anything with that number. I've just changed it into a different form. The real work so far has to be in here, where I'm going to add fractions together. And when I add them together, I know I'm going to need a common denominator. And I know that the denominator that's common to 3 and 6, the lowest one anyway, is 6. So that will be negative 2 sixths. 1 third is negative 2 sixths. This one's already in 6, but because I'm going to end up dividing, I might as well change it into an improper fraction. So 4 times 6 plus 1 is 25. And this is actually a plus symbol. Sorry if that didn't look very good. Plus, and I'm going to leave that right now. Oops. I'm going to leave that for right now as just a, a mixed number. I might change it later. We'll see how the rest of the question goes. So that's negative 14 thirds still, divided by, and if I add negative 2 six to 25 six, I end up with 23 sixths. And notice now that I have an entire number for this, I don't really need it in a bracket anymore. But remember how we divide fractions? We have to change that to multiply the reciprocal. And then from here, I look through it to see if there's any cancels I can do. And yep, I do see a nice one, actually. Give myself a little room to work here. 3 goes into itself once and into 6 twice. So I'm going to do negative 14 times 2 is negative 28. And at this point, I have two choices. I can either change this guy to a mixed number and then do common denominator, or I can change this one into an improper fraction and then do common denominator. I think I'll go with the improper fraction route. So this is negative 28 20 thirds, add 3 times 5 is 15 plus 2, 17 fifths with a negative on it. The common denominator, unfortunately, of 23 and 5, since they're both prime, is to actually multiply 23 times 5, which would be 115. And 5 is what I times 23 by to get to 115. So I have to do 5 times 28, which is uh, 140. Let me think about that, make sure I did that right. Yep. And then I have to actually do 23 times 17, which is, again, kind of unfortunate. So I'll do that as scrap work, perhaps, to make sure I do it right. 7 threes is 21. 7 twos is 14 plus 1 is 16. Carry a 0 there. 123 is 23. And I get the number 391. Both of these numbers are negative, which again means that I'm adding their values together. 
Maybe I'll do that on the side too as a little side calculation. 1 plus 0 is 1, 9 plus 4 is 13, and I get negative 531 one hundred fifteenths. Now, if I want to change that back to a mixed number, I have to think about how many hundred fifteens might go into 531. And just using my estimation skills, I know that it's going to be 4 or 5. No, 5 is too big because 5 fifteens would be more than 30. So it is going to be 4. So how much is 4 one hundred fifteens? 4 hundreds is 400. And 4 fifteens is 60. Sorry, that's a 4. My smartboard's a little off. And so I'm going to have 531 minus 460. And do a little bit of, oops, what did I do that for? Sorry. 1 minus 0 is 1. There's where I need to do the borrow. 13 minus 7 is 6. And I'm going to have a grand total of negative 4 and 71 one hundred fifteenths. Lots of work in a question like that. So take a deep breath and let's try another one kind of like it. This one actually has a squared in it. And again, it's a lot of calculations. This is, by the way, a plus. That one is a plus, And that one, in case you can't tell, is a divide. So I have to kind of approach it logically. All right, what, do I get, what am I going to do first? Well, I'm going to do this part of the calculation first. Everything else I'm just going to leave the way it is for now because I notice I'm adding here. I might change this answer to a mixed number once I get to it, or to an improper fraction, sorry, once I get to it. Um, but for the most part, I'm just going to leave everything the way it is and focus on that bracket first. So what is 4 and 1 quarter plus negative 3 and 1 half? Well, I might, I might just leave them as mixed numbers for now. Uh, I already know I need a common denominator of a quarter. So I need to actually figure out how much this is. Well, let's see. 4 add negative 3 is 1, but a quarter add negative 2 quarters is negative a quarter. So if I have 1 positive and I take away a quarter from that, that's going to be 3 quarters. Everything else still, of course, needs to stay the same. So again, that was 4 add negative 3, which is positive 1, but it was negative 2 quarters plus 1 quarter, which is negative a quarter. And maybe off to the side just to show you, 1 add negative a quarter is very obviously positive 3 quarters. So from here, that's 1 and 5 ninths minus negative 2 and 1 sixth. Add, when I square 3 quarters, I'm timesing 3 quarters by itself. I'll do that as its own step. Some of you might find this step kind of obvious. So that's 1 and 5 ninths minus negative 2 and 1 sixth plus 9 sixteenths divided by 2 fifths. Okay, according to bed mass, what computation or what part of the calculation is next? That guy, the divide. So I'm going to have 1 and 5 ninths minus negative 2 and 1 sixth plus 9 sixteenths times 5 halves. Looking for a cancel in there, and I don't see one. 5 and 9 don't share any factors with 16 and 2. So my answer so far is 1 and 5 ninths minus negative 2 and 1 sixth plus 45 30 seconds. Okay, at this point, i got to make a decision. Am I going to do everything in improper fractions, or am I going to do everything in mixed numbers? Um, I might go to improper fractions again. Some, a, a lot of the class seems more confident with that than they do with uh, doing them without. So 1 times 9 plus 5 is 14 ninths. I'm going to change minus a negative to add a positive. And 2 times 6 plus 1 is uh, oops, 13 sixths plus 45 30 seconds. Okay, next. I need a common denominator for 9 and 6. I'm going to do this in two steps. So let's see, the common denominator of 9 and 6 is 18. So that means that they both become 18ths. And 9 had to be times by 2 to get to 18, so that's now 28. And 6 had to be times by 3 to get to 18, so that's now 39. So I have 28 plus 39, 
which is 67 eighteenths plus 45 30 seconds. Okay, what's the common denominator of 18 and 32? Now that is actually kind of a difficult question. I might have to go off to some scrap paper and think about that for a bit. If I were to count by 18s and count by 32s, what is the first number I'd hit in both lists? Maybe the easiest way to do that is to break this down into it's 9 times 2 and break this guy down into the fact that it's 8 times 4. Um, and then again, this is now 3 times 3. That is, of course, 4 times 2. And realize that all they really have in common is this 2. So unfortunately, sometimes numbers get ugly. The best I can do is say that it's 2 times 3 times 3 times 4 times 4. So in fact, the common denominator of 32 is 2 times 3 times 3 times 4 times 4, which is 2 times 9 times 16 which is, let me think about what that is, that would be 32 times 9, which is 270 plus 18 is 288. Yikes. So I have to now go to a common denominator of 288. My word. Okay, so how many 18s in 288? Actually, I can kind of figure that out from right here. Um, to get to the number 288, I times all those factors together. And 18 would, in fact, be the 2 times 3 times 3. So all I have to times by is 16. So 16 times 67 will give me that numerator. 16, 6 times 7 is 42. 6 times 6 is 36 plus 4 is 40. Carry the 0. 67, 2, 7, 10. So that is 1,072. How did I get from 32 to 288? Well, again, 32 would be this 4 times this 4 times this 2, right? Because uh, 32 is 4 times 4 times 2 is 16 times 2. So really all I have to do is times 45 by 9. And I'll do that again as a scrap calculation here. 5, carry the 4. Five, uh, 9 times 4 is 36. 405. And put it all together, and I have 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 plus 0 is 7. And 10 plus 4 is 14. So I have 1477 over 288. Again, I have a feeling if this was a textbook question, I would probably have to get to a mixed number to check my answer. So I'm going to have to, in my head, figure out how many 288s go into 1477. I'm going to round this up in my head to, to a 300. And if I was counting by 300s, I would for sure get four of them in, in the number 1477. So I'm going to try four. Four 288s is 32. 4 times 8 is 32 plus the 3 I carried is 35. And 4 times 2 is 8 plus the 3 I carried is 11. So it's uh, 1152 left over. So the answer is going to be 4 and whatever 1477 minus uh, 1152 is, which is going to be 5, 2, 3. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, looks like I could have got more than 4 in there. So back up. How much is 288 times 5? Five. 5 times 8 is 40. Carry the 4. 5 times 8 is 40. Carry the 4 is 44. 5 times 2 is 10, plus the 4 I carried is 14. Yep. So I actually have a leftover of 1477 minus 1440. 7 minus 0 is 7, 7 minus 4 is 3, and so my actual answer is 5 and 37 288ths. So there you go. I was slowing down and going step by step, and I did have a little misadventure there when I guesstimated how many 288s go into 1477, but even still, I was going pretty fast, and I'm just looking up at the timer here and realizing that that was 19 minutes of work to do what was essentially four questions. So as you can see, these questions take some time, they take some work, and the reason that I'm good at them is because I've had lots of practice with them. It takes good number skills, it takes good integer skills, it takes good fraction skills. It needs to be practiced. So take a look at your textbook assignment and good luck.